All right, this is the study guide for the introduction to functions, and so let's walk you through it. So, as we do, well, number one, you had to match the word with the letter of the correct definition. So, um, number one, we're looking at a range. That is the dependent. So, we're going to put a little D right there. Um, we've got a relation. We call that a set of ordered pairs. So, that is C. And then we've got a function. And that is a relation where each input has exactly one output. That's an E. And the independent part, that is the domain. And finally, we wrap it up with anything that forms a line is going to be a B. That's linear. All right. Number two that you can still see on screen, given the following relation that is not a function, change one number so the relation is a function. But what if we came down here and changed this because we have a 12 here and a 12 here. And we can't have multiple or the same x with multiple y. So let's change this 12 to, let's make it 11. Okay, and then it's a function, and we can go ahead and work with that. All right. So let's take a look at the next section. So here's 3 and 4. All right, so we need to list the domain on this one. And so I'm going to use a little set notation for this. A little fun, fun bracket here. So the domain are all the values of x. And so if we put them in order, not that we have to, but here's our domain. And our range is just the numbers 1, 4, and 6. We can, we can list the duplicates, but we don't have to. Then if we list the relation as ordered pairs, 5 matches with 6. That's an ordered pair. Three matches with four, one matches with one, negative one matches with six, negative three matches with one. So is the relation a function? Well, each x has exactly one y, so we can say yes. Um, each input has exactly one output. On four, the first graph should be a function, while the second graph should not be a function. So, oh, well, that's a function, because it passes the vertical line test. That's not a function, because it fails the vertical line test. I can put vertical lines through, and those vertical lines cross the function or the graph more than once. Okay, let's look at the bottom item on here, number five. If the domain is 4, identify the range of the function shown there. Well, what this means is it means if x equals 4, we have to figure out what is y. So to do that, we're going to take y, leave it be. We're going to put 4 in. And this is going to give us negative 24 plus 15. So the final answer is negative 9. And that's page 1. All right. Let's move on. Let's go to 6 through 9. What is the value of e of 4? Well, first of all, we see that it's e. So that means this e means we're using this function. If it's a different letter, then we'd have to use that function that goes with that. So to find e of 4, e of 4 is going to be negative 5 times 4 plus 4. And if we simplify that, we get negative 16. Now, the difference between 6 and 7 is 7. b of x is 20. So I'm going to put 20 in for b of x. And I'm going to solve this equation by adding 2 to both sides. It'll get me 22 equals 3x and finally divide by 3. So x is 22 over 3. So I'm looking for the value of x that will make that 20. 8, find a value of x to the f of x equals negative 59. We do the same thing. Negative 59 is what I have to get for an answer. So that's going to give me negative 64 equals negative 2x. Divide by negative 2, x is 32. On 9, we're trying to figure out how far a truck driver is going to drive. So we're going to solve d of 4 which is 55 times 4, or 220 miles. That would make sense. Okay, question 10. 
It's a linear relationship. So we have to look and say, okay, well, what, what am I doing to get from 2 to 50? And 4 to 100, what, what's the pattern I'm seeing here? Well, if I take 2 times 25, that gives me 50. 4 times 25 gives me 100. So if I multiply by 25 every time, 6 times 25 is 150. 7 times 25 and 8 times 25, there's my answers there. Okay. Now, it's, it's linear Okay, because if I were to fill this in, if I put the number 3 here, well, this would be 75. If I put 5 here, it would be 125. So I'm adding 25 basically each and every time. 11. Okay. Domain and range. Well, the domain is all the hours. So I could list those as 7, 8, 9, and 10. And for the range, 64, 65, 68, and 73. All right, let's move on to the bottom of this 12. Identify the tables, whether they're linear or not. This one is not, this first one, okay? Because if you look, we're multiplying by three every time, okay? So to be linear, I have to be adding or subtracting by the same amount every time. So we say no, because there is not a constant rate of change. We'll put a triangle for change. Okay. This one is because we are subtracting 7 every time. So a constant rate of change exists. And here we need to fill this one in. Okay. So look at the gaps here. They're different. Okay. So from 0 to 1, we're going up by 3. So for every unit, I'm going up by 3. So from 3 to 3, this would be 6. So I've had to add 3 and add 3. But look here. The gap here is 3. So for every unit, I'm going up by 3. So if I'm going up 3 units, I have to take that times 3. So 3 times 3 is 9. And I'm going to have to add 9 to this because I'm adding 3 here. So one thing you'll notice is there's this one-third relationship. 3 over 9 is one-third, so that's 15. Here I'm adding 1 again, so I've got to add 3. That makes that 18. And that's the end of that page. And the final one. Go to the top. Given the graph of this function, what is the value of the following? B of negative 3. Well, that means when x is negative 3, what is the y value? Well, when x is negative 3, my y value is right here at that. This, come on, this point right here. I should put it at 3. And if x is 1, what's the y value? Well, when x is 1, I'm down here at... This point looks like I'm at negative 3. And when x is 3, what's the y value? Well, when x is 3, I'm down here at, what is that, negative 4? Done with those. Let's look at 15. Okay, we're going to pick numbers for the table. I'm going to tell you what. We usually want to pick like negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Since this is a fifth here, I would pick numbers that you could divide by 5, like negative 10, negative 5, 0, 5, and 10. And we can do it in our head. So this would be negative 10 times a fifth plus 2. Uh, that would turn out to be 0. And we'd have, and I can do it in the, the right order as it says, 2. This would be 1 fifth times negative 5 plus 2. It would be negative 1 plus 2, that's 1. 1 fifth times 0 plus 2 is 2. 1 fifth times 5 plus 2 is 3. And this is 4 because a fifth of 10 is 2 plus 2 is 4. And we could plot this, so negative 10, 0. Plus it's a lot easier to plot if all your numbers are whole.
there's the graph, and it's linear because it's x to the first. So 16, our circle, all the functions below that are linear. That's linear, and that's linear. Even though b of x equals 9, that means it's always 9. That means it's horizontal. On d, it's got an x in the exponent, and a of x has a squared in it over the x. And our final contestant is number 17. What would be the value of this? This should be in the notation here. This should be a f of x right there. This is also f of x if it's not on yours already. What would be the value of f of x if you rode 7 miles? So we have the function given to us. We would take 50 cents times 7 plus 2, and that would give us 550. If you rode 30 miles, it would be 50 cents times 30 plus 2, which is going to be 17. These are all in dollars. And if x equals 10 and f of 10 equals 7, well, what does this mean? Well, I'll just state it for you because you're listening anyway. If you ride 10 miles, the taxi will cost you $7. That's it. That's the study guide. If you knew how to do all those before you watched this, congratulations. You're a pro. You're going to go dominate the exam. The next time that we see you. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. We'll see you next time.